The last thing I want to discuss with you this evening, because I do think it's time we discussed it, is the problem with paying um, Attorney Gould. Uh, I have chewed this over. I've had advice from a whole pile of people. And I think that what we need to do, uh, I considered seeing if we could raise the money amongst ourselves, and I have no idea what it is. He has not presented a bill. Um, we have a line in our budget for legal expenses. I make a motion we table this discussion on the attorney's fees. I have some information okay. that might add <coughs> And a motion on the table. Yeah. Motion on the table. Well, the motion hasn't second. been seconded. And yes, it has. We need to... Ooh. Did you second it? No. No. <laughs> Just stay I thought you said something about seconding. No, I said no. there's no second. Stay put oh, no for second. That. Okay. No second. Am I doing kindergarten here? Yes. Okay, Regina, go ahead. Okay. This is, like I stated earlier, but it wasn't the topic of discussion that I didn't even realize we were going to be discussing tonight. I have so, it on the agenda. This is a memorandum prepared by town council mm -hmm. that echoes some points from the board of selectmen. Um, where, where is that, Regina? Have we seen that yet, or what? No, no this I'm the only one oh, that has okay. this. So, okay. points in connection with uh, this budget committee meeting mm -hmm. that was called to order. Uh, there is. I'm just going to read through this. It's easiest for me to do. Yeah, go ahead. There is no good reason for the budget committee to have been called by Chairman Wolseley to meet on January 31st. This meeting was called by email from Mary Louise to Christina Osman dated January 13th, in which she states the cable crew is not needed, the stated purpose and agenda Mary Louise emailed to Christina is limited to approving minutes of December 20th and review options for compensation of Attorney Gould in regard to Board of Selectmen refusal to allow committee to use its legal budget line. Mm -hmm. These are all attachments I have if anyone's interested right. in looking at them. Okay. But Attorney Gould has stated in his email to me dated January 13th, this is Mark mm -hmm. writing this, yep. on which Mary Louise is copied, states that he is not going, to bill, not going to bill for the time he has spent unless it is able to find another way to pay us. The timing of this meeting is suspicious. Mary Louise called this meeting on January 13th, right after the selectmen's meeting. On January 9th, when Selectman Bean and others took her to task for her actions in having Attorney Gould and having him backdate his invoice. This meeting is being called right before the deliberative session on February 4th and right after Mary Louise signed up to run for selectmen. Mary Louise keeps pr pressing me to render conclusions before the deliberative session and before the general election about whether the right to know law was violated by all the emails. She thinks the right to know law is not violated and somehow wants to prove that point now. It will take some time to wade through all the emails and analyze them. The budget committee never voted to hire Attorney Gould and Mary Louise doing so was sent what the, bu so was sent what the budget committee voted to do at the meeting on December 20th. The minutes of December 20th meeting showed that a motion by Michael Pierce Mary Louise was directed to find an appropriate attorney to assist the budget committee and to have that attorney attend a meeting of the budget committee to answer questions and gain approval of the hiring of a lawyer. This is not what she did. On December 29th, she signed a long and detailed retainer agreement with a Concord attorney that required a $2,000 retainer to be charged against at the hourly rate of $275 per hour and to replenish same monthly to get it back up to 2000 the minutes of the December 20th meeting did not come out even in draft form until after January 9th selectmen's meeting. The right to know law requires them to be posted in five days. Based on what the budget committee actually voted to do, to have Mary Louise bring an attorney to them to decide whether to hire the attorney, there was no reason for Fred, who was there at the December 20th meeting, or me, who was not there and did not watch that meeting until during the Christmas holidays, to tell Mary Louise at the December 20th meeting, or to call her thereafter to tell her that the Board of Selectmen make the ultimate decision whether to hire outside counsel and whom to hire. Mary Louise had Attorney Gould's office backdate his $2,000 invoice for the retainer to try and get it paid out of the 16 budget. Mary Louise filled out and requested a requisition form at the Finance Department on January 3rd after the year had turned attaching and support the December 29th 16 retainer from Attorney Gould. Mary Louise wrote an email to Christie and Fred dated January 3rd, stating, please be sure that the money for the retainer is taken out of the budget committee 16 budget line. 
an invoice dated December 29th, 16 from Attorney Gold was presented to finance, but this was not the invoice originally generated by Attorney Gould, which was dated January 3rd, 2017. Attorney Gould revealed in his email to me, dated January 8th, that Mary Louise had the January 3rd invoice redated to December 29th at her request for the purpose of paying the retainer out of the Budget Committee's 16 budget subline of 2000 for legal. The fact of this redating came to light in a string of emails sent to Christie by Mary Louise herself dated January 4th, 2017 with subject redated invoice. The finance department charges bills for services to the budget year in which the services were performed, not the year they were billed. Attorney Gould's January 8th, 2017 email to me reveals that he first conferred with Mary Louise on December 29th, 2016. At his stated public interest rate of 275 per hour, he would have to have spent eight hours with her to justify the full $2,000 being billed in 16. Mary Louise is playing fast and loose with year-end invoice, doing precisely what she wrongfully accused Fred and the Board of Selectmen doing with purchase orders at the end of December 2015. Attorney Gould's 275 per hour rate, his retainer, replenishment policy, and his charging for travel time from Concord and back all would have needed to be carefully evaluated and compared to other attorneys' rates before he was hired. Attorney Peter Laughlin, whom the town already uses, charges only 190 per hour and without a retainer, whereas Gould charges 275. Attorney Laughlin is an author of treatises on municipal law as well and is well known and highly respected statewide. Attorney Laughlin's travel time from Portsmouth would only have been a fraction of Gould's travel time to and from Concord. Attorney Gould's retainer letter of December 29, 2016 notes that he will be charging for travel time. So if he comes to Hampton, he will be charging for at least two hours of downtime at $275 per hour or $550. The Budget Committee should have been presented with these expensive realities of hiring Attorney Gould to evaluate before Mary Louise committed all 2,000 of the Budget Committee's legal line to this one attorney by signing the 20, December 29, 2016 retainer letter herself. This was not only an unauthorized move on her part against the committee's direction at the December 29th, 2016 meeting, it was poor financial management. The committee would be getting very few hours for its $2,000. There is no need to hire counsel just to determine whether to answer the selectmen's right to know law request. The emails to a quorum of the budget committee are already clearly governmental records under New Hampshire, RSA 91-A colon 1-A3. The obligation to produce these governmental records in response to a proper RSA 91A request, which the selectmen's was, is not one that requires counsel. Until these <coughs> communications are produced and evaluated, you do not even get to know the real question, whether it, which is whether they violated the right to know law. The three posted opinions of New Hampshire and HMA legal counsel already state that the right to know law has been violated. The end result after completing the analysis of all the emails will be a training session for the committee to prevent future violations. Even if, if a petition article for 41 to abolish the budget committee passes, there will be one more cycle of budget committee's operations to go through. Madam Chairman, if I may, I don't mind you reading a long thing that, that might be correct, but in that case, there's several very important errors in what you've said. So I, I want to strike that whole thing from the record because it's all a bunch of hogwash as far as oh, I'm concerned. No, it's, it's not as far as I'm concerned. Wait. I'd like to ask some okay. questions, please. Uh, who is the author of that document you just read? Town Council. And who was that document sent to? Me. And only you? Because I was coming here tonight. So it was sent directly from... Well, actually, did you get it? Maybe you got, it. you've got you seen it? Yeah, no one else's, right? As far as we know? As far as I don't know. There's no copy for and when well, we it, can have a copy if she needs it. And, and when did the selectman direct? I got, I got get a trial. Get it. <coughs> when did the selectman direct You'll, the town attorney? When we found out about this meeting. To write that document. I posted the meeting a week ago. I when now, we if found we out about this meeting. the document from the town attorney, you can at least digest it rather than well, having I can have to read email something. It to you. Because <laughs> it's, if I may reclaim my time, Mr. Pierce. I was speaking first. Sorry, Mr. I Trump. got the chair subsequently from the. Wait one second. Go ahead. I was asking at what meeting the selectmen uh, instructed their attorney to draft that document. 
this was something that happened between me and Mark. Because uh -huh. Mark had points he wanted to make. Yes. And the only other right, selection so this, this that I am aware of that knows of this document is Rusty. So the, that, the, the creation of that document is at your instruction individually, and the publication of that document, which you just did, uh, is at your discretion individually. Correct? Yes. Okay. okay now I want to I want to observe that you know there were, there were several points. Now, by the way, I would like a copy of that if so we could have. Is you still uh, uh, and can and so I, I don't have you, it in electronic form, but I can get it. No, it's excellent. I would love it in electronic form. Mm -hmm. Yeah, send it to everybody. Much preferred, okay. always. All right. Save the treats. Now, now, I, are you a set? No. Okay, because I have a couple of things to say. That was a lot of in that in that document mm -hmm. uh, to consume, especially you know uh, with your ear. I'd like to read it to be more accurate, but. When it started out, it started out, and it sounded like a political document, not a legal document, mm -hmm. frankly. Well, we don't understand why we're having this meeting tonight. Well, just because you don't understand and, you're, and, and, and your lawyer doesn't understand doesn't mean that there's not a valid reason. He's actually proclaiming under the guise of being a lawyer that there is no reason for a meeting. Well, clearly he said that we're going to be in the agenda going to be approving minutes. Well, just merely meeting to approve minutes is a valid reason to have a meeting. Review so, options for compensation of attorney gold. No, no, no. That's that's one point that you may question if it was proper to be on the, the agenda or not. And I, I can see that's a very argumentative point. I tend to concur with, with that opinion. All right? It seems to me absurd. I've said that to the chair individually. It is absurd to talk about how to pay for a bill that has never been seen never will be seen because it will never be generated. Okay, it's just an absurd topic to have. But that does not lead to the conclusion that that attorney is specifying in the letter that there was no reason to meet at all. She wanted to meet also to approve minutes. That's a very valid reason to have a meeting. So his conclusion in there that there was no reason, and I'm, I believe I'm quoting that accurately, he concluded, well, actually we said, he concluded no reason for a meeting. And no, we and, said, we didn't understand what the reasoning was. And, and you, if you go further, you'll see that it actually said there was there is no reason. Well, what that is that? the reason? Wait. Well, I told you, there are there are, on the invisible to me agenda. You know what I find ridiculous that he has to spend the time. I agree. There is no this. reason he shouldn't just be all because of three or four people. people. I That's agree. He shouldn't be spending the time, and, 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 and perhaps you should have. Because you haven't noticed we're working on real important things. And perhaps you should have taken that into consideration when you individually directed him to take that time. Well, I didn't want to miss anything. All right. Okay, let's, well, gee. Let's Let's get control of the I don't want you to miss anything okay, either, so ladies, you know, let's not yell at each other. Ladies, let's just it talk sounds about like it. right now this meeting yeah. is for a campaign Enough. and that's it. Okay. That's exactly what it sounds oh, like. Yeah. It Wait, sounds like a political right. document. Well, okay. I'm not, not him. Hey. Wait. What? Wait. Wait. May I finish? Okay. I have the well, first. wait. I, let me just get a, a couple of words in here because I have talked to Attorney Gerald a couple of times. First of all, that letter landing dated December 14th got some members of the budget committee upset that appeared to be a, a threatening type of communication uh, I have talked to attorney Gerald a couple of times we have the little concern about getting counsel paid and it wasn't easy to find counsel in the week between Christmas and New Year's but nevertheless when I talked with Rusty and Vice Chair Waddell around the 12th of January, roughly, I asked the two of you if I could meet with you. We were talking about compensating counsel, but we also uh, talked about a couple of other things with the emails. And Rusty, you said that you gave me permission to call Attorney Buckley, right? Right. Now, I didn't know because nobody told me, because it had been six years since I chaired the Budget Committee, I didn't know that there was a list of approved people who could call the NHMA. So when I called Attorney Buckley and got a rather rude reception, I was huffing and puffing, and one member of the committee said to me, well, gee whiz, why don't you just, uh, you know, call or talk to Attorney Gerald? So the next time I was in the town office, 
I said, you know, what's, what's going on? Uh, Attorney Buckley was rather rude to me. Uh, haven't you notified him? Or if you haven't, would you tell him that Nick Bridle is no longer the chair? So and please inform him that I'm the chairman. And I walked off. I, I saw him face to face in his office. And I said, you know, would you do that for me? And I, I took off. I expected that would be done. Shortly after that, the Board of Selectmen voted to cut everybody off, except for the five top favored entities. When you told me that I could ca call Attorney Buckley, Rusty, I did. And we had a half hour, very cordial chat. He was kind enough to forward to me the attachments that I forwarded to all of you, including the amicus curiae brief. And one thing he said to me, and, and the only suggestion he made to me was, you want to be using BCC, blind carbon copy, whatever the heck that is. As soon as he told me that, that is what I started doing. I had a couple of other conversations with him, but then I asked, <laughs> I asked him about the selectman's authority to have control over the budget committee, zoning board, and planning board budgets with the legal line in them. I said, can, I know the selectmen have control and the town manager has control over the departments. But planning, zoning, and budget committee are not departments. So I asked Attorney Buckley if he could clarify this for me. And he got back to me with this email. It is with regret that I must inform you that the charge I was given by your select board was that I was limited to giving right to know law advice only to you as chairman, but rather than the, re let's see, uh, your questions do not deal with the right to know law, but rather the relationship among town attorney, town manager, and budget committee. I'm unable to provide legal advice to the chair of budget committee in these operations. We are paying $17,000 a year to the NHMA, and they are very helpful. When they're accessible. What, when they're accessible. But Steve can tell you from past experience, police officers have been calling. It. I've called them in the past, no problem. Second consideration, Attorney Gerald told me that he, he, I told him, I said, I'll tell you, because I bumped him to an, into him in the town office, and I said, I talked with Attorney Buckley. I did exactly what he told me to do. I've been using BCC ever since, and Gerald said, well, I don't agree with that. He said, that's, that, that's a risky thing, too. So now I've got Attorney Buckley from the NHMA telling me one thing. I've got Attorney Gerald telling me something else. Then we have a series of emails between Attorney Buckley and Mark Gerald, um, January 4th. Mark, I concur that the prohibition on electronic communication found in RSA 91A was probably not intended to deny public bodies the use of email to receive information only communications. Given the ruling in the Porter case, it nevertheless is safer to always ensure the emails sent to a quorum are distributed using the blind CC method of distribution so that no one member who receives the email could hit reply all and possibly create an illegal electronic meeting. I also agree with your assessment that a number of the emails you cite among Hampton Budget Committee members constitute violations of RSA 91A. Um, I spoke to Mark Gerald last Thursday when I was in the town office and I said, Mark, you and I have known each other since you came on as the attorney in this town. Why couldn't you pick up the phone instead of sending out all these certified letters and getting everybody upset and demanding copies of emails? You have about every email I sent because I copy you, like Bob and Ginny, on every confounded email I produce. And I said to him, just, you know, just what do you want me to do? And he said, use the mail. Now further, the uh, email here 
from uh, Attorney Buckley once again. If the Good morning, Mark. If the Porter versus Sandwich order on the merits dated August 14, 2015, is interpreted in a particular manner, I would agree that Woolsey's emails dated 11-29 and 12-1 created the opportunity for a reply by a quorum of a public body. In that light, and based upon Judge Temple's interpretation of RSA 91A, those emails would be Ill illegal electronic meetings because they were sent to a quorum of the Hampton Budget Committee and there was an ability to communicate contemporaneously. This interpretation is founded on the facts in Porter being almost the same situation involving the Woolsey emails. In Porter, it was the chairman of the ZBA who sent the email to the entire membership of the ZBA. And the same is true concerning the emails courtesy copied by Woolsey to a quorum of the Hampton Budget Committee. Caution must be exercised, however, because the Porter decision could be interpreted to mean that any time a quorum of a public body receives an email from an elected or appointed official from the same municipality that would create an ability to communicate contemporaneously and therefore constitute an illegal electronic meeting. So now I have town council, and we're not lawyers. None of us are lawyers. And we're struggling through this stuff. I said to Mark, have you, you got my packet, Rusty, that was given directly to you as chairman. Copies of my emails in here, most of them begging for information. And I said, have you gone through those? Most of the people on the budget committee have given you their copies, their information. And he said, oh, I've been too busy. Excuse but me. But he wasn't too busy to write that, was he? <laughs> Huh? Well, he wasn't. This is the whole point. He wasn't too busy to write that. No, now, but you know what? He has. Been, he has been very busy. Yes. Right? Well, but he's not. But after sending us threatening letter via certified mail, you know how many mail, emails there are to go through? Threat yeah. Hundreds. Yeah. I'm, I'm not. I'm not finished. Now I have communicated with Attorney Buckley, and when you and and Vice Chairman Waddell and I met, Rusty. Uh, and we were talking about the emails, I said, I really, in hindsight, I understand I should not have sent the email to everybody saying people were beefing about pay raises. And you said, yeah, but that, you know, that wasn't uh, the Mount Vesuvius volcano. But now what, situa what situation are we in here? We've got town council telling us one thing on that BCC, attorney Buckley, who's being paid through the NHMA to give us another opinion, and he said, go right ahead and do that. And if you read, and I hope all of you read the amicus brief, but what caught my eye, and it's an excellent brief, attorneys Buckley, Johnston, and uh, Burns collaborated on this amicus curiae, friend of the court brief, and the Porter versus Sandwich situation. And this is the Supreme Court. This is where it will be advertised. Uh, Attorney Gerald told me he agreed with Judge Temple's ruling, which is only a superior court ruling. But he said, Judge Temple is a smart young man. Well, I don't know whether he is or not, but we're caught in a legal tangle here. Um, on page 16 of the amicus brief, attorneys Buckley and Johnston and Burns say, similarly, the Municipal Association's booklet cited above draws a clear distinction between two situations. In the first, a land use board member sends an email to all other members expressing an opinion on a matter before the board, but no member sends a substantive response. In the second, a substantive discussion ensues via email. Conclusion, in the first situation, identical to what happened here, there is no violation. In the second, the exchange clearly violates the law because it is a use of communications outside a meeting to circumvent the law. CNH, local government center, etc. The effect of the trial court's ruling, that's the superior court, if allowed to stand, would be to prohibit any member of a public body from ever sending an email to other members on any subject within the body's jurisdiction. Again, this ignores the practical reality of life in the 21st century. When the email does not lead to anything remotely resembling a discussion or deliberation or an action, 
There is no reason for the action to be prohibited. In its 2004 final report, the Right to Know Study Commission noted with favor Justice Holmes' comment that the machinery of government would not work if it were not allowed a little play in its joints. This court is urged to bear that admonition in mind and not make it impracticable for local public bodies to conduct their business when there is no legitimate threat to the public's right to know. Question? Yes, sir. Did Montreal find any responses to Mary Louise's emails? Dave Mora did one to yeah. my to my young um, to my knowledge. Pay that's all I know of right now. So Madam we have a tempest Chair. in a teapot here. Madam Chair. Yes, sir. I know we don't have a tempest well, in a teapot. I just it want depends to... on, on I suppose on which teapot you perceive yourself oh, well, in. Oh, right. You know, from my point of view, that was a political document. All the noise that's been taking place yeah. has been uh, not pursuing substance, but pursuing political ends. Yes. Electoral ends, more specifically. Now, I don't want to get involved in that. I generally try to stay away from that stuff. You know, I focus on what's budget committee stuff for the budget committee. I don't care about your campaign for selectmen. I, I don't care about other people's campaign against Mary Louise for selectmen. All right? It's all interesting noise when I'm in the mood for noise. But when I come to a budget committee meeting, although I ought to be prepared for noise, I still don't want to hear noise. <laughs> and that's too much noise again. And I just like this, this thing to be over with. What we can learn that is not noise and is substantive from this entire exercise is that while the budget committee is an independently elected body and the planning board is an independently elected body and the zoning board of adjustment is an independently elected body etc which conveys to the average voter that we are independent bodies yet this recent experience clearly tells us that we do not have independent control of the resources we need to do our job and can any body be truly considered to be independent when it does not have independent control of the resources it needs to do its job? When it must go to another body and say, may I please, in order to have resources that it perceives it needs, can you really expect anyone to believe that we are truly independent? Yeah, we may be elected independently, but it would appear we are subservient in terms of gaining any necessary resources to do our job. And really, that either needs to be addressed or the voters simply should accept the fact that we're not independent. Neither is the planning board, neither is the zoning board of adjustment, nor anyone else that has to go say, may I please, to another body to get the resources it needs to do its job. And that's the only substance that I have derived out of the last couple of months on this topic. Everything else has been a bunch of noise. And I wish it would just stop. I agree with you. Then stop. But Please. I move. We stop. Can I get a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Meg. Uh, okay. Is that up? for it out. <laughs> oh, God, no. <laughs> All of this could be resolved. Can we take a vote? People, uh, people would just wait what one happened? second. Can here. I? Wait a second. I need the substance of the what's what you stop. Take a vote. Uh, stop. Uh, <laughs> stop uh, addressing the, the topic of uh, the uh, RSA ninety one A. No. Of of the lawyers non existent bill. Okay. That was the topic we were supposed to be discussing, right? Okay. Well, and all the noise that goes with it. Yeah. She gets but, that in there with it. And all the noise that goes okay. with it, correct. Yeah. Stephen has... Jim, I got one thing I want to say, okay? Sure. From the beginning of this, okay, my gut feeling was it was nothing but a witch hunt, okay? And I'm going to throw it out as that, okay? And it was some personal, and it should have never gotten to where it got to today. It's been a waste of time. It's been a waste of energy on all the members here. It's been a waste of time on the slugmen. It's been a waste on everybody, okay? We've all been involved in it. But when the public finds out how minuscule this issue was, and that's going to come out soon, then that's what's going to play the whole game of what went on here, okay? We've wasted so much time and energy on this, 
And I can't wait for the public to find out that this was nothing more than some minuscule personality issue that came out that never should have been addressed in front of this I board. hope you're right, but I believe the truth has great difficulty getting out sometimes. This may very well be a case when so many are so heavily invested in what is not true. Well, that's what I've seen in this. The, the bottom line here is that people should be able to pick up the phone and communicate. Okay. Yeah. Sonny, wait, wait one let second. Me, let me try to simplify this. The Board of Selectmen, in my opinion, their job is to hire the town manager. Sure. They're not to micromanage everything, okay? Town manager presents a budget. Since you've hired the town manager, you're going to approve it. The budget committee represents a broad segment of the community. Ex-selectmen, representatives from the police, representatives from the beach, representatives from the school, people in the community who have an interest, okay? All right? So it's our job to present a budget. Mike Pierce and Jerry Canoy last year raised the issue of the price of gasoline with the state contract. It's resulted in savings, what, $40,000? Okay, another item in the budget one of the bonds is paid off. There's three hundred thousand dollars available now. Five hundred nineteen. Regina, remember that? Five hundred nineteen. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, the board of selectmen is not going to take the all, all the board of selectmen said is great job, great job when every department presented. The budget committee takes the takes the takes the budget apart and looks at it and try, and works to to make it better for the community. There's a tremendous liability out there with the pension plan. You know what's gonna happen there. The state isn't contributing. It, the, the shortfall in 10 years or 15 years is gonna come on the town. All right, we're trying to address these things. So it's, you know, all this could have been avoided. Mark could have, come to, to a meeting or call Mary Louise, yes. okay? Because what, what I was thinking, Lamy's has a booty call room. She was the last witch that prosecuted in Hampton. This is a personal vendetta because I found out from Mary Louise that she made the motion to remove Phil Bean from the chair of the I'm sure well, this I wasn't aware of it. But Phil Bean removed, being removed from the chair. He was the board of select. I yes, want to tell I you a little about Phil Bean because I've had some contact. Madam Chair, I think we should slip off. I don't see subject. what Phil Bean has anything to do yeah, with this I think conversation. This digging a bigger yeah. hole. Well, so, this is a witch hunt. The hole is digging. Well, we know it's a witch hunt. Well, as far as I'm don't, aware, it's not, not a witch hunt. When people do, if well, the board of selectmen had done the same thing, you'd be all over. If the board of selectmen had backdated an invoice or a document, it wasn't backdated. It wasn't backdated. It was Sonny, voted on that, December Sonny, you're Sonny, well, you're absolutely wait, Sonny, I appreciate with what you have to say. Phil Bean doesn't need to get brought up. I'll tell you something else about Phil Bean on the budget stop, committee. Stop, okay. stop, Mr. I stood in Mr. Pierce's kitchen because I do not have a printer and I do not have a scanner. And I stood in Mr. Pierce's kitchen on December 29th when he was kind enough to print out the... Uh, engagement letter for me. He stood in his kitchen and watched me sign that letter and date it. I gave him an original copy. I kept an original copy, and I mailed the third original. He emailed it to him right on the computer. You, you, he scanned and emailed, but I mailed the original to Concord, December 29th, right. 2016. That's right. So what now that was be the week between well it was the week between christmas and the new well, that's year that's not what attorney Gould it was saying. a delightful week to be doing this he told, he told attorney yeah, they uh, Gerald, wait, that it michael was in fact, uh, mike was agreed on the 29th as he said in his emails and you can look at him if you want to. michael I did look at him. Shh, michael wait a minute uh the following weekend <coughs> was New Year's weekend, and, and everything was closed on Monday because of New Year's. So when Attorney Gould's staff got in Tuesday, 
they shot, the, the retainer should have gone with the engagement letter. Why it didn't, I don't know. But they sent then the retainer, art, uh, yeah, uh, invoice. invoice. And when it came through dated the 3rd, I said, gee, that should have been dated the same day. Those two should have come simultaneously. It's the week between Christmas and New Year's, and I don't know what the attorney's staff was doing, but somebody neglected to put that invoice the next week. But the engagement letter was signed in Mike's presence in his kitchen. Right. On December 29th. So you're erroneous. Okay. By so I'm erroneous. not trying Adrian to. Adrian Letter had no authority to be signed Wait. by Mary Louise because the only one that can hire an attorney is the town manager through the position well, of the Board of Selectmen, which I don't understand how you were served as Board of Selectmen for four terms and you don't remember this that. Board. Don't get it. No, I think, the, I think the major issue here is that most people in this town actually can consider. The planning board, the board of adjustment, budget committee, etc., to be independent bodies right. and to make independent decisions and follow through on those decisions. I mean, it's just like kind of like a, it was probably like a, a knee jerk reaction more than anything else. Well, it's just naturally what you do next. You know, she was actually instructed by the budget committee. The motion was, unlike what the selectman's lawyer would have us believe from that document, right here. the motion is mischaracterized there, no doubt with some degree of. Uh, well, I won't get into why that might be, but the bottom line is the wording was that the chairman was instructed to retain right. an appropriate lawyer. Not to find one, but to retain one. And so it's only reasonable that when she decided to retain one, that she have a retainer set up. And you're I willing mean, to spend that's a lawyer plus, $550 look, look, just That to wasn't my decision. That was not my decision. The money. decision is being mischaracterized yeah. by your political yeah. document yeah. being yeah. produced by, by your legal mouthpiece. Right. All right? That's the bottom line. I'm done talking. Right? you got to thank God because that political document is doing nothing but stirring up trouble that is totally unnecessary, and I'm really tired of this discussion. Totally. Mm. Can I have a vote on my motion, Madam Take Chair? Okay, your motion, please, please restate for Mrs. Kravitz. To stop it. Stop the noise. Stop, stop discussing the, the, the lawyer's non-existent bill and all noise associated with it. She's got that written down already. I okay, think. and you right. seconded, Mr. Pierce. Okay, in favor? Unanimous. No, Sonny did not. No. Oh, so, I'm sorry. Sonny. I'm opposed. Okay. Sonny, do you want to make some more noise? Now, before we go, since... <laughs>